One of the features that was announced recently in public preview is the ability to use private link in combination with application gateway. And this enables some pretty powerful scenarios you can use for private B2B communications in Azure using completely cloud native technologies. So I want to walk you through what this means at a functional level and show you it in action uh, in the portal and using some demos. So I assume you know what application uh, gateway is, uh, cloud native, layer seven reverse proxy. You take in sort of your request from your users on the front end, and then you spit it out the back end to one or more servers based on X information, and that could be layer seven information. And we can tag on things like the web application firewall to inspect and protect that traffic before it gets anywhere near your web servers. I also assume that you have a, a broad understanding of private link, but if we don't, let's just quickly revisit that. Private link is the ability to access not only Azure PaaS services in a, a private way, but also access services in other virtual networks using a thing called private link service. What I always find really helpful is to agree on the terminology. And this is a, an analogy that uh, I use to, to do that. So imagine you've got a, an escalator here that goes kind of from the bottom, takes you from the ground floor to the top floor. Uh, the ground floor is where you get on to the elevator. And that's where you enter the world of private link. Uh, and to get on the elevator, you need to enter via a private endpoint. A private endpoint is that NIC that gets instantiated in your virtual network and gets a private IP address, like a VM NIC, and that's where you need to get to to get into the world of private link. When you get to the top of the elevator and you come out of this technology, you've got some options. You can go to uh, an Azure PaaS service, so you can use private link to get to things like Azure Storage, Azure SQL, and that's certainly the most popular use case for private link. But there is also a secondary output, which you can choose, which is something called private link service, which can be in any other VNet on Azure. It doesn't matter which region you're in. So the private endpoint can be in the consumer side VNet and the private link service, you can view that as kind of the, the outbound portal or the, the outbound endpoint in another VNet somewhere on Azure. It could be your VNet, it could be someone else's VNet. In the past, what happens is you define that private link service, that, that object in the VNet, and you point it at something uh, to deliver the service. And that something had to be a Azure standard load balancer. So whatever you wanted to put uh, it kind of behind private link service had to be fronted by a standard load balancer. So you had to sort of define your own service, whether it's a web farm or some NVAs, that, that was up to you to define sort of the back end of the load balancer, but there had to be a, a load balancer resource there in the on the provider side. What's changed with this announcement around private link and app gateway is, well, you can now have that outbound endpoint behind the private link service that can be application gateway. And we, we show this in the documentation with this sort of analogy here is you have kind of the, the tenant one, the consumer side, they've got some things that access a private endpoint which uses private link, which gets to the app gateway, which gets to whatever sits behind the app gateway. And this, this wasn't possible. This chaining of private link and app gateway wasn't possible before this public preview. And just to round out that analogy, when I, when I use this uh, picture to describe the service and agree on terms, you can kind of think about the, the actual elevator itself as being the private link technology. So we've got private endpoints, Azure Power Services, private link service and Azure private link. Okay, still you might be scratching your head thinking, uh, you know, show, show me this in action, describe it to me in more technical detail, make this real for me. So we've built our lab environment out. Uh, so first of all, we've got um, kind of the gray box here. This is the provider side. Let's say the, the, the company that's exposing this service to be used by their customers. We've got a provider VNet which is hosted in uh, the Sweden central region of Azure. And inside of there, we've got some subnets. We've got a gateway subnet with an express route gateway, goes back to on-prem. We've got an application gateway subnet with an app gateway in, which has got WAF enabled for some protection for our web servers. 
And we've got another subnet, which has got um, a couple of things in it. It's got uh, a private link service, which is uh, being used by App Gateway. We'll come on to that. It's also got a web server, which is simulating my, uh, my web backend in Azure. You see my web server in Azure has got this IP address 10.8.0.5. Well, let's just confirm sort of base functionality here. You can see my App Gateway has got a couple of front ends. It's got a private front end, which is listening on port 8080. And it's got a public front end, which is listening on just regular port 80. I've configured my, my rules and listeners in App Gateway in a certain way to allow me to show you this work in, in a, a sort of a, a, couple of, uh, a couple of ways. So the first one, rule setup that takes traffic in on the public end, this 51 address on port 80, and maps it to my web server that's hosted in Azure on 10.8.0.5. To verify that, I can simply open a tab here, go to my App Gateway IP address. You can see this has been served up a basic text file that's running on my web server hosted in Azure. To drill that home, I can talk you through the App Gateway logic here. So I've got my, my front end, my public front end, which is listening on uh, configured listener on port 80, which is using a rule to take the public listener and map it to a backend called Azure, which is going to this 10.8.0.5 IP address. Just to make that even more real for you. Here is my actual web server that's running in Azure here. You can see it's running Microsoft IIS. And this is where my, um, my very simple text file is hosted that says, hey, this is a server in, in Azure Sweden. Hence, you see that link. So nothing special there. All, all I've done there is, is shown you App Gateway working you know, from, from the public internet, because this, this browser here is just on my, my home machine here in the middle of the UK, coming over the internet, hitting App Gateway, going to a web server, nothing special there. But also, I've got a second listener configured. I've got a private listener, which is listening on the private IP address on port 8080. I've got a rule that is mapping my private listener to my backend pool that's called on-prem. And in my backend pool, I've got one IP address defined, which is 192.168.2.1, which is, if we go back to our diagram, App Gateway is just a reverse proxy write. It can reach any IP in the back end if it's reachable by the VNet. And my VNet here is connected back to on-prem via express route, where there's a web server on 192.168.2.1. So what that means is if I access my application gateway on its private listener, I should be served my website that's running in Paris uh, in my on-prem data center not my web site that's running inside of Azure Sweden. Okay, to verify that, I've simply gone to a test virtual machine that's in my provider side VNet, gone to my App Gateway private front end, 10.8.80.101 on port 8080, and you can see that's been served a website hosted in Paris. I won't run through the, the App Gateway config in detail, but you can see that I've got the relevant, um, I've got two front ends here with two, two listeners configured, Got two backend pools configured, and I've got my relevant rules configured, which I've just talked you through. Let's try and get to the, the, the meat on the bone of this video, which is the interesting part, is where we introduce private link. So what I'm going to do, I'll talk about it pictorially first. I am going to add a private link service in App Gateway. Once I've done that on the App Gateway side, I'm going to give that information to my customer and then let them use this green line to get back to my on-prem web server. Okay, so inside of App Gateway here, using this new blade, private link configurations, I've added a private link service. And you can see I've placed it into a particular subnet in a particular VNet, and I've mapped it to my App Gateway private front end. Okay, so what have I actually done? So I've, I've added this bit here, due to the integration between private link and App Gateway, is now mapped to my private front end, but that's all I've done. I haven't, I haven't actually started using private link service because just to kind of revisit our analogy at the start, all I've done at this point is configured app gateway, built a private link service, linked the two together using the built-in integration. What I haven't done is set up my private endpoint on the consumer side and use the elevator to actually make the magic happen. So the next step is for me to give some information to my customer side and for for the, the private endpoint experience to be set up on the consumer side. So let's go and do that. 
Okay, here I am in my other Azure tenant, and this is simulating the customer experience. So at this point, this customer's got a virtual machine, is hosted in Azure inside of North Europe, and they want to connect this machine to the provider's service in a private way. Now this machine is on a virtual network that is not peered in any way to the provider side. First thing they would do is create a private endpoint using the information given to them by their provider. So they would give their private endpoint a name, put it in a virtual network that is reachable. And at this point, that's where they need the information given to them by the provider. So I'm going to choose to connect to an Azure resource by resource ID. And I'm going to take my resource ID of the application gateway. And this is being given to me by my provider. At the moment, we don't support aliases, but in the future, we will support aliases for, for app gateway, like a normal private link service would, would uh, allow. So I take that and I put that into my resource ID field. It will also ask for a target sub resource. And this is where you'll need some more information from the provider. So in this case, we mapped our private link service to our application gateway private front end. And that's the bit we need to enter into the sub resource ID field. I need to put my private endpoint somewhere. Remember private endpoints are just NICs and they appear inside of VNet. So I'm gonna put it in the same subnet as my test virtual machine. I'm not going to worry about DNS integration. I'm gonna show you how I handle that for the test scenario in a second. Okay, my private endpoint has finished deploying. So notice it says awaiting approval. That means the provider side needs to approve it, which makes sense, right? Or anybody could connect if they knew my resource ID. And also note, it has got a, uh, the, the private endpoint Nick's been assigned this address, 172.16.100.5. So just to confirm the thing that I've set up there is I configured a a private endpoint here in my purple customer VNet, which I now need to get approved on the provider side and set up and check it works. So if I go to my app gateway now and click on private link on the left, under private endpoint connections, I can see I've got this connection, which is um, pending approval. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve that. Okay, so that, now that's been approved, effectively what I've done is I've, I've connected that private endpoint in the purple VNet over to the private link service in the provider VNet. And notice it's going from a private endpoint in North Europe to a private link service in Sweden. And that's no problem at all. Private link is kind of global by default. And you can think of the bit of glue that's in the middle there, the, the Azure SDN magic, that is private link as a technology. Back on the consumer side, we can see now the connection state is, is approved. Okay, so if I go to my test VM on the consumer side, let's see if we can think about testing this private link connection that's been set up now. So to do this, what I've done is, first of all, I've taken care of DNS. So on this test VM, I've inserted a local host record with my private endpoint IP address with a test host name of apgw or appgateway.com. Okay, so if I go to appgateway.com, remember on port 8080, because that's what my front end listener uh, port is using because my port 80 is being used by a different front end listener and we, we can't share multiple listeners on the same port. We can see that we're accessing the website hosted in Paris. So let's go back to our diagram just to validate what we've just done. From this VM, I created a local host entry, which mapped this IP address to appgateway.com. I then browsed to that URL, which diverted my traffic to the private endpoint. It then used the green line, it used private link to get all the way to Azure Sweden, which came out of this private link service, which is now baked into the application gateway user experience. It came out of private link service and hit my app gateway on the private front end the 10.8.80 address on port 8080. App Gateway, acting as a, a normal reverse proxy, took that and behaved according to its rules, which as we saw, we've configured that particular listener 
to point to a backend that exists on 192.168.2.1, which just so happens to exist via my express route circuit and points to a web server hosted on premises. So you can see there how I've used the combination of private link, private endpoints, application gateway to go from a completely separate isolated tenant in a completely different Azure region back to my on-premises data center. And I haven't exposed anything on the internet. It's gone completely over the Microsoft backbone and down my private express route on-premises. You could even take that one step further. If the customer side had a data center that was connected to Azure, so let's say, for example, this data center here was inside of Amsterdam, which also was connected to Azure. Remember, one of the great things about private endpoints is they're reachable from on-prem. So as long as you take care of DNS, you could have two completely isolated customers on Azure, where you've got the purple consumer side having something in their data center going into Azure in one region, uh, and coming out via private link into a completely separate provider side VNet and either go into a web server locally inside of Azure on the provider side or go into a web server back on their on-premises network. So think about how powerful that is as a, as a story. If you are trying to do any sort of B2B communication and you want to do it using private networking, if you and your counterpart, the provider or the consumer, happen to be in Azure, if you're both in Azure, then you can use this technology to bridge the gap, right? If, if you can get to Azure, you can make the magic happen. And you can do that without having to use any sort of VPNs in the cloud, and without having to use any sort of VNet peering. And uh, as we said before, one of the benefits of private link is the, the green line, the SDN magic, doesn't really care about IP addresses. So even if you've got the purple users got overlapping IP addresses with the green user. That doesn't matter at all. So it's quite a powerful tool if you think about this for your B2B scenarios. Okay, I hope that explanation and demo has helped you. So when you look at this documentation now, and I'll leave the links in the, the comments below, hope now that when you look at this, you can sort of unpack it and visualize what's happening behind the scenes. I will say in this video, I've concentrated purely on the connectivity. Uh, to sort of bring it to life. In a production environment, there are going to be other things that you, you need to think about, of course. My demonstration was using HTTP, so I didn't have to manage certificates and authentication between client and server. Of course, this is App Gateway, so it only supports HTTP and HTTPS. If you need to use other protocols, then you will need a, a different solution. You need to think about uh, how you maintain visibility of the client IP address. So one of the things you'll see happening here is when your consumer side comes into your service, the IP address that you assign to your private link service on the provider side, that will be the IP address that the traffic looks like it's sourced from when it hits your backend web server. So you probably want to investigate something called TCP proxy if you need to maintain the visibility into the client IP address. Uh, also pay attention to the number of NAT connections and how many of those PLS or private link service IP addresses you need. Again, I'll leave some links in the documentation. Uh, and finally, as with anything with private link, DNS is always at the core of this. So yes, you can build the network layer, but uh, to use the network layer, at, uh, with IP addresses, you have to get the traffic there in the first place. So handling DNS is always is always part of this, and um, how you handle that with consumer and provider B two B services uh, definitely requires some thinking about. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Thanks a lot.